in 2010, my colleague Eric Conway and I published a book called Merchants of Doubt. And in that book, we looked specifically at a group of scientists who had been involved in challenging the evidence of climate change. These people were rejecting climate science not because they thought the science wasn't good or because there was some flaw in the methods that scientists had used or because the evidence wasn't enough, but because it threatened their political beliefs. So there's been this long delay, a long gap between when scientists were first telling us that the climate system was changing and how long it's taken for the American people to understand and accept that. And that delay is really costly because that's 20 years during which greenhouse gases have been accumulating, during which we could have been taking steps to adopt renewable energy or more energy efficiency or develop new technologies that would help us solve the problem. Now we face a situation which climate change is underway. It's gone from being a prediction to a fact. And now it's going to be much, much harder to remedy. We're seeing increasingly states and provinces starting to take action in meaningful and significant ways. And the best example of that in the United States is California, which has its climate change law, AB 32, which has committed the state to major reductions in greenhouse gases and major uh, incentives to increase renewable energy use. In British Columbia, there's a carbon tax. The province of British Columbia has put a price on carbon. They did that. It was a conservative government that did it with the support of business. So it shows how you can do this in ways that the business community will support. You might say, well, what can a town like Columbia do? But actually, it turns out, often it's easier to get political change in your city than it is in your state or your country. And cities can do a lot, because so much of um, greenhouse gas production is associated with transportation and also with buildings and building codes. And cities have a lot of control over those things. If somebody doesn't believe climate change is real, I hope that after they hear me speak and they understand that scientists have been working on this for more than half a century, that they'll get it that this isn't just some passing environmental fad. It's like teaching. I always say with teaching, you know, you have to figure out where your students are at and you have to begin teaching where they are. And so it's the same here. Different people are in different places on this issue, but no matter where you are, I think there's something, uh, there's, there's, forward, there's forward movement that we can achieve.